Boys and men meet. God, we thank you, Lord, for our leader. God, we pray, Lord, that we all that we do and say today may bring glory and honor to your name. God, that you will get the glory. Father, we pray, Lord, for each and every person under the sound of my voice that we will learn and more, more of you and grow in your way. We thank you for all your many bountiful blessings. Thank you for this day. We ask it all in the name of Jesus the Christ. Amen. Amen. I'm going to go ahead and pray one more time All just right. for me. Okay. <laughs> Dear Heavenly Father, Lord God, we come to you right now in the name of Jesus, Lord God. Just asking Heavenly Father that your presence, Heavenly Father, will be felt. Lord God, we pray that you'll make us aware right now of your presence, Lord. I ask that, Lord, you'll speak through me, Heavenly Father, and that what I have to say, Heavenly Father, is what you have to say, Lord God. And I just thank you for this moment, Heavenly Father, where we get to share fellowship with one another, Father God. In Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. 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 All right. So, for today, we're discussing manhood. Um, to put a little twist on it, um, the direction I'm coming from is more biblical manhood. And I got four steps that, you know, can help us grow in in our not just our walk with Christ, but as a man, as a father, as a leader in whatever field or area we're in. Um, and I believe that this is what you know God expects of us. And and this is not all of it. This is just a few, you know, few nuggets that'll help us uh, move forward. So the first step, first step we have is uh, biblical manhood begins with the knowledge of Christ. That's the first step. Step one is your knowledge of Christ. Um, we, I'm going to go to Proverbs 1, 7. If somebody can uh, go to Proverbs for me, Proverbs 1, 7, and we're going to read, uh, we're going to read that. Do you want somebody to yeah. Oh, you got yeah. it, Brad. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, when you got it. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge, but fools despise wisdom and instruction. Right, right. So I know for me personally, um, a lot of misdirection came from um, me not understanding why I was here. Um, and as a man, and then coming into having a family, having a wife, having children, it's like at a certain point, it's like running around like you know a chicken with their head cut off. You you're you're misguided. You know you grow up. We all grew, here grew up um, in the world. You know some of us partook you know partook in some of the activities of the world. So we thought that this was the particular way we needed to structure and order our life and after coming into acknowledgement of God and, and learning and falling you know more and more and more in love with Christ I'm starting to understand that the ways I was taught of, of what a man is is really it's opposite in in the sight of God uh, so I believe that before we can know what to do as a man and what we and know what to do as to lead our family, we have to acknowledge God. And that fear is not a, you know, it's not a fear of being afraid, but just a fear of reverence, of, of looking at him in awe. Um, and once you do that, that's the start. That's literally the bare minimum. Uh, I have another scripture. It's going, we, we, we're going through a lot of scriptures tonight. 
Hmm. Proverbs, Proverbs 8 and 3. Proverbs 8 and 3, uh, 8 and 13, I'm sorry. Proverbs 8 and 13 reads, to fear the Lord is to hate evil. I hate pride and arrogance, evil behavior and perverse speech. So now we kind of pull back another layer of what that fear of the Lord is. So what we just read in Proverbs 1 and 7 was the fear of the Lord is the beginning of all knowledge. Now we ask the question, well, what is it to fear the Lord? To fear the Lord is to hate evil. It's to hate pride and arrogance, evil behavior, perverse speech. So now we kind of cutting back some of those layers of how do we fear the Lord? Uh, if you go to Psalms 111 and 10, Psalms 111, And 10 says, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. All who follow his precepts have good understanding. To him belongs eternal praise. So again, just breaking back more of those layers of fear in the Lord. Um, the beginning of wisdom, all who follow his precepts have good understanding. So now, now that you've started with fear in the Lord and following his precepts, it helps you to begin understanding of what direction is need to be taken from here. You know, where do I go from here? Um, when it comes to leading my family, when it comes to my, my marriage with my wife, where do I go from here? Start there, start with fearing the Lord. Um, and then this last scripture I have is coming out of Ecclesiastes and it's Ecclesiastes 12 and 13. If I'm moving too fast, just tell me to slow down. Ecclesiastes 12 and 13. It reads, now all has been heard. Here's the conclusion of the matter. Fear God and keep his commandments for this is the duty of all mankind. So I know I know I've been in a position where I, you know, get caught up of wondering what my purpose is, or I, I think we 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 get so hung up on like, oh, my pur my purpose is supposed to be big. Oh, am I supposed to be preaching? Am I supposed to be teaching? Am I supposed to be doing this? Am I supposed to be in this auxiliary? Mm -hmm. You know, your purpose has nothing to do with that. Your, your purpose literally has nothing to do with that. It has everything to do with following after God. God gave us work to do. He gave us work from the beginning when he made Adam. When he made Adam, he gave him work. So we all got work to do something to keep our hands busy. Exactly. But when it comes to, to true purpose and what it is that we need to do, it's okay. following after God. Um the end of the matter has, has uh, the end of all has been heard, fear God, keep his commandments for this is the whole duty of man. I believe that if you start with that and end with that, it'll bring much clarity to, to everything you're going through, everything you might have questions over, um, everything you might be dealing with, struggling with purpose, everything, just start with God. So that's step, that's step one is um, fearing the Lord, coming into knowledge of Christ. Any questions, anybody? All right, so we gonna move on to step two. So we got step one, knowledge of Christ. Step two is to cleanse yourself. And this is something that I know everybody has heard pastors say, but separate yourself from people, places, and things. Um, because once you 
come into knowledge of Christ, you understand that you are now accountable. There's no more saying, oh, I didn't know. I didn't know there was a God. I shouldn't be living like this. Now you know. You came into knowledge, now you know. Second step, cleanse yourself. Separate yourself from people, places, and things. Um, someone, can someone get Romans 8 and 7? As soon as you got it, you can read. All right. Because the carnal mind is enmity against God, for it is not subject to the law of God, neither indeed can be. Right. So... I have, I have the 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 ESV, and I I really love the way it it, it breaks it down. Uh, verse seven it says, "For the mind that is set on the flesh is hostile to God, for it does not submit to God's law. Indeed, it cannot. Those who are in the flesh cannot please God. Cannot please God. So once we come into to reverence in the knowledge of Christ, step two is to cleanse yourself because being around evil, being in the world, being in the flesh, operating in the flesh, you now are hostile to God. You've been hostile to God. So for the mind that is set on the flesh is hostile to God. That means operating out of flesh. When something happens, instead of going, Lord, what do I need to do in this moment? You've already reacted based upon your own natural uh, instinct. Uh, I, I, yeah, I, I could go down a list of things that I've reacted naturally. Um, and I was actually a lot of times spared by the grace of God that things didn't go sideways. Um, and in those moments where I've acted out of the flesh. Um, there was a, a it was like a a, a a deep regret a lot of times, especially the closer I, I've, I've walked with God and um, I know I'm not supposed to be doing something and I do it anyway. It's uh, there, there's this, this, this ache it's really this this spiritual ache that I get, uh, and it sometimes it takes me days to to kind of get over because I feel like I did, you know, going through the the feelings of um, what's the word I'm looking for? Shame, shame, mm -hmm. going through shame, and uh, but that's what that's what the flesh will do. That's what the that's the type of uh, position that the flesh the flesh will put you in. Um, so, I have one more scripture that'll help. First John one nine through ten. First John one. First John one nine through ten. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. If we say that we have not sinned, we make him a liar and his word is not in us. Right, so from the, from the jump, from, from the beginning, your natural state is sin. So even if you think you ain't sinned today, you sin today. And even if you, it, I know I've heard it multiple times, it's that even on your best day, it's still a worse day in God's eye because he is so holy, because he is so big. Um, that's why it's a, it, it's a, the, the cleansing, I believe, is a continual process. It's not just a one and done. Mm -hmm. We accept Christ. We are under the blood. So th therefore, when God looks at us, um, he sees his son. He see he sees us as righteous. 
but the cleansing is not for our salvation. The cleansing is really, I believe, for how we are able to live on earth, um, how we are able to operate on a day-to-day -day basis, what the dirt and filth that sin, you know, leaves on us, it kind of drags us down because I've been in it to where I've gone days of just like completely not rejecting God, but operating outside of his law. I've went days, weeks, months operating outside of God's law. And there's a, 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 a real heavy baggage that comes with that, especially when you've been introduced, especially when you've been introduced to the Lord. Um, so scripture tells us multiple times to cleanse ourselves, to mm -hmm. confess our sins, to release ourselves from the, the burden of what the enemy can place on us when we have sin. Yeah. So that's, that's, that's step two is to cleanse yourself. Philip, I got Separate to yourself. Uh, I'm Go just, ahead. I'm glad you elaborated on that and then kind of personalize it because I was, um, you know, when you went to two and you said cleanse yourself. And then the first thing you talked about is people, places, and things. And then I was kind of thinking about even some of the conversations we had here. Even the previous one was anger, right? And um, in my younger days, that was like one of the biggest struggle. It still is a, could be a struggle now um, because there's some instances where um, I don't I have control over the, the people that I'm around or I may be at a place um, or they may be in an event or something that could be triggering. And um, to me, that kind of brings it to life. So I'm glad you personalized that. And so it's just like, I'm just, I was just thinking, so how do we, um, in those scenarios, how, how do we handle that life in, on those scenarios in real, in real life terms? In, in real time, right. Real time. I was, something that I've been battling with heavy these past couple of weeks was, uh, I, I've been walking and getting closer to God and um, I've really been enjoying his presence. And I noticed that when I'm at work and I'm around people who don't share the same faith as me, there's worldly conversations going on. And I, I do a better job at work of not participating because I'm conscious about what they might think about me because I'm open about my faith. So I'm conscious that if I make the wrong move, I'm gonna make God look bad. So I can't say certain things. I can't join in on certain conversations because I know it's gonna make them look bad. Mm -hmm. And I know that it's gonna cause someone to be like, ah, that's why I don't believe in Jesus to begin with. Um, a quote that really hit home. And I don't know if I shared it with you guys before, but um, a quote that, that I love is, it's one thing for people to hate you because of Jesus. It's another thing for people to hate Jesus because of you. So going back to the cleansing and mm -hmm. um, how we to react and, and interact on a daily basis, I've been struggling with, so like I said, at work, it's, it's easy, but when my brothers call, when, when family call from back home, it's like I changed into this whole other person. And I had like this out of body experience the other day. I, and I'm, I'm talking to my brothers and I'm just listening to how I'm talk. I'm like, you could, I couldn't, I couldn't talk like this right now. The way I was talking to them, I couldn't speak like this to y'all. And I was like, dang. And so I've been battling with that a couple of weeks and I went into the shop um, a couple of days ago and a guy came in and we started, somehow we got into a conversation of the Lord. He, he explained to me his testimony, but he, he had spoke something that I wasn't, I hadn't said anything to nobody about. And he was like, you know, I'm gonna help you right now. Cause I know what you've been dealing with. He was like, you've been, basically to the fact that you've been dealing with um, not not necessarily perverse speech, but your tongue is your tongue is going back and forth. You this way one day and then you this way the next way. You know, you talking 
proper and you talk in the Christian lingo over here, but when you go over here, you sound like somebody completely different. So, and he, and one thing that he was saying that, that really helped was that it, it's going to take time. He was an ex gang member. Um, and his testimony is crazy, but he was like, it's, it's going to take time. I, I asked him like, well, how you went from, from this to that. How, how did, was you able to do that? And he said, it's going to take time. It takes time. Like he said, he spent two years, no outside voices, just him and the word. And I believe that to be true because when I'm in tune with the word, nothing, it, nothing can nothing can interrupt that. But the moment I try to take the world and the word and walk together, that's when things get shifty. So the only way, the proper way to, I'm not gonna say filled because you already have the Holy Spirit, but a, a constant acknowledgement of the Holy Spirit consistently daily. And it's gonna get me to my fourth point, but we gotta consistently be in the word, consistently feeding on the word, operating in the word, having thoughts that have to do with the word. And it, it it's hard. I'm from, you know, a natural standpoint, it's hard because I go through the day, I think of everything else to do besides read my Bible. I think of literally everything else I could be doing. And sometimes the Bible is the last on the list, on purpose. And that's not a good thing. That's something that I have to reverse. I have to make the word not just first, but first, middle, and last, because at the end of it all, you can't take nothing that you have accomplished here on earth with you. And the only thing that's going to be beneficial is your relationship with God. And um, you've accepted Jesus, so your salvation is secure, but how are you going to live life? You know, what is the quality of your life going to be? Is it going to be searching after money? Is it going to be searching after uh, things or searching after different positions in the church or searching after different whatever it is? Or is your, your life going to be spent with good quality time with the Lord, enjoying what he has for you while you're here? Um, sorry to go off on a tangent. So my next my next scripture, to go right there with that point. Second uh, Corinthians 7, 1, it says, since we have these promises, beloved, let us cleanse ourselves from every defilement of body and spirit, bringing holiness to completion in the fear of God. Let us cleanse ourselves from every defilement of body. That means flesh, physical, sexual morality, any type of physical sin, and spiritual. What are you entangling yourself with in the spirit? Um, when it comes with evil spirit, um, bringing holiness to completion in the fear of God. So that's step three. Uh, step three. My battery low. I'm sorry. Step two, cleanse yourself. Um, step three, before we move on, is there any, any questions on, on cleansing yourself? You know, I like... Um... That scene you said, Philip, how, how did that go again? Um, when, when people hate you because of Jesus. Mm -hmm. So it's one thing for, for people to hate you because of Jesus. It's another thing for people to hate Jesus because of you. Mm. Yeah, that's, that's, man, that's, that's powerful, man. I like that really. Um, and you know, like you were saying about your, it's a lukewarm spirit. That's what you was having at that time. And, and, you know, we know God doesn't, doesn't play in between. Um, and I think we all battle with that. I know for me, I do. I'm nowhere near perfect. Um, sometimes I got to catch myself a lot of times, man, because I'm a, I know I'm a zero to 60 person in a heartbeat, man. It, it really doesn't take too much. Um, for a person to get up under my skin and then I'm not the one to be biting my tongue. 
Um, but God has disciplined me in so many areas. Like you said, man, you have to be that example at all times um, in the world because they're looking at you, man. And I, I know people, my family, um, friends, old school friends, you know, I've, you know, I witness to, I talk about God, you know, um, I try to live my right, my life upright before God. And so a lot of them are looking for you to fail, man. So they can say, yeah, I, 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 I knew you wasn't, you didn't love the Lord the way you say you loved him. You know, you, you just as good, you just as bad as I am. So, you know, I do have to stay focused. I do have to stay um, embedded into the word of God. And I found myself, man, battling, man, every morning I could get up in the morning and, you know, I'll pray every single morning. That's my first thing I do. I pray. Um, but do I, I don't study my word enough. You know, I don't get in depth enough with my word. Um, so, and then after, you know, I pray, you know, I get up and kind of get my day kind of going. Um, and, but I find myself sometimes, man, taking up 30 to 40 minutes in a day, just looking through my phone at Google, you know, with the storylines that's going on. And God convicted me about that, man. He was like, listen, hey, you you got time to, to um, give Google, and I'm not even reading the whole story. I'm just going from one story to the other, just, just looking at it and reading the headlines of stuff, you know? And, and then sometimes when I sat back, I said, man, you know, I really wasted 30 to 40 minutes and sometimes even an hour of my day, that time I could have gave to the Lord. So I told myself, you know, I said, if I can't sit up here and study my word and give that time to the Lord, then I can't touch Google. And I'm not even a Google fan. I'm not even a phone fan like that. You know what I'm saying? But I found it that it caught my interest just reading just those little one story to another, just the headline part of it. Just, you know, just scrolling from one to the other. <laughs> and But God dealt with me, man. He was like, you know what? Hey, you say you want that closer relationship with me. You want to wanna, um, fulfill the purpose that I have for you in which, like I say, I still don't know what my total purpose is here on earth. Um, and, you know, and the only way I'm going to figure that out, I got to study to show myself approved. I got to be that example, like you say, man, you know, regardless to what, man, I know a lot of people are looking for me to fail. And it's sad to say that a lot of friends, quote unquote friends, um, a lot of family members are looking for it to happen. Um, and most definitely the world is looking for it. So, you know, we have to stand upright at all times, man, and, and, and realize where God has taken us from to where we are today. Um, and I like that quote you said, man, because that's a powerful quote, man. And I'm going to try to remember that um, and implement that because we can't be a stumbling block for ourselves. And most definitely don't want nobody to think we're a stumbling block because of Jesus. Right. Right. So, um, right. That's powerful, man. Thank you. You, oh, you know, Dick and Fred, I'm, I'm glad you spoke, but you made me think about you personally. And um, as Phil was teaching us this, and I said, um, when Phil and I would say, hey, bring it to real life, that's you. Because I, I, as you're talking, and I think it's helpful to be just as authentic as you are, uh, because there were scenarios that you and I had talked about personally over the phone when you were in situations, real life situations with people or places or things where you had an encounter with somebody where you could have went the other way. Yeah. I think, I don't think we give ourselves enough credit um, of how being authentic, God can really use us because then we're able to follow God spiritually. Yeah. Another point, just want to um, step in there. Good you know good discussion so far for the first john one and nine you know i typically said it all the time um if we confess our sins but that one it really go even though it's a principle that we can be in but um a repentant state or mindset is really dealing with salvation it's really it's really dealing with the, the salvation everything else dealing with cleansing and just like the one you're going to go over second corinthians seven and one um like saying that one so it's the difference between sin like you're saying how we were born and shaping in iniquity a sinful state then being saved once we're saved we're justified now we still have a sinful behavior sinful nature 
So it's a different than conduct or holiness is a separate from the sin. So like the one you're going to get over in 2 um, Corinthians 7 and 1, that's what it's talking about, purging. It says, let us cleanse ourselves. Um, when I look at the word cleanse, it means to purge uh, of evil. How can we do that? So what it is, back, that's back to that people, places, and things. It says, let us cleanse ourselves from all filthiness and of the flesh of the spirit and perfecting holiness. So how we keep that contact with the Holy Spirit is making sure we're not allowing the world to drag us down, but we're allowing the word to pick us up and sustain us like sand through um, at the end of the day. So um, so one is just dealing with, like I saying, you get your relationship right to know who he is. After that, he actually, by justification, by our faith, we, we're no longer, sin don't have to reign in our lives. We allow it, but it doesn't have to. And that's the last one I would say is 2 Corinthians 6 and 17, where it makes it real clear. 2 Corinthians 6 and 17 says, Wherefore, come out from among them and be ye separate. Same line of thought that you're doing. saith the Lord and do what? Touch not no unclean thing. And then I will receive you. So it's still talking about kind of both salvation. But again, if you want holiness, Holy Spirit to dwell in you, to empower you, you know what I'm saying? You got to be as clean as possible. And and I would add on to that as well because I've I've heard conversations and I haven't studied enough to 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 really give an in depth explanation. But the conversation had to do with this is a little off topic. But do we confess our do because we are saved? We've already confessed our sins, believe in Jesus Christ. Do we continue to confess our sins? Like Pastor mentioned, that uh, First John had to do with salvation, except in Jesus. Um, one thing I struggle with is, do we continue confessing our sins? Yeah. I would like to yeah. say, I would like to say yes. <laughs> the only reason why is because not you're already saved. Once saved, I always saved. Again, another argument for another day, <laughs> but. <laughs> I would like to say, even outside of once saved, always saved, us confessing our sins releases something. I don't know what it is, but there is uh there is something attached to when we sin and we hold it without releasing it, without confessing no, it. You're in a sinful so, you're, you're you're sin. So at the end of the day, when you do something wrong, sin is based, the easy way to do sin, sin is disobedience against God. The sinful state of man, humanity, that's what Jesus Christ did. But when we being disobedient to the Holy Spirit or to God's word, that in itself is sin. But so, yes, anytime we have faults, anytime we do something wrong, we need to confess and repent and ask for forgiveness. Um, I mean, so many scriptures walk not after the walk after the spirit, you will not feel the lust of the flesh. Romans six, like saying um, in one, what shall we say then? Shall we continue? in sin that grace may abound god forbid mm -hmm. how can we say that we're dead of sin but still live therein no not that you have many the baptized and when you still go through all that we like you said earlier it's a lifestyle each right. and every day is a challenge but at the end of the day we're upon the grace but we're when we're not we're saved like saying by grace and not works but our works show that we've been saved right and so yeah you right. cannot when you keep me go through romans 6 Paul does that argument. We're not up on the law, we're up on the, up on the grace. And he does a beautiful argument and explains to everybody that just because you're up on the grace, if you doesn't give you permission to sin, you're not going to continue to sin. Right. And then if you don't right. feel guilty about a sin, then you might not be saved. Right. Because like you said earlier, you should feel not right for a couple of days, or at least for a moment. Yeah. It should yeah. feel good to do wrong and you're supposed to know right. And the right. Holy Spirit, I, the Holy Spirit will always convict you uh, of sin. That's yeah. his job, is to convict you of, uh, of sin. And Paul had that same struggle. He said, When I would do good, evil is always always. Present. always. Yeah. When I mean to do good, yeah, yeah. Evil, evil is always present. Yeah. So yeah. Um, yeah, you no. know, Phil, Phil, I think that's um for me, I think it can be dangerous. And I think accountability with us believers and Christians is important. Um, and I say this because I've, over the years as a therapist, I've had many people, Christian, that come into treatment who had struggled 
with an addiction or something that that reared it, its ugly head. And they were clergy, they, they were in positions in, in churches, synagogues, or whatever the case may be. And where things went south was when the flesh told them at this point, because now they had status, they, they were in a position of authority, and they, they, they didn't do that. You understand what I'm saying? Because in their mind, they thought that they were thinking, wait a minute, I'm supposed to be, so I'm glad Pastor Wells expounded on that because just just being working with people who have addiction mental health issues and things of that nature people in you know i've seen a lot of people who are christian a lot of clergy mm -hmm. like I, said, I mean, quite a bit because but and i think i mean great people that you 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 know that they are believers but just those things even even like therapeutically we say okay you only seek is your secret but I can translate that over to, to, to the word of God. So I'm for me, I'm very careful with that. That's why for me, these be it brotherhood is very important. Um, fellowship is important. Um, you know, Fred mentioned the study in the word is important, but sometimes I, I need all the above for that accountability piece. Well, yeah. the, the main thing, the word, John 15 and two or three, like saying the word of God cleanses us. And so when Reverend Ralph was talking about the, the conviction, you got to be hearing the word. Mm -hmm. You either read the word or hearing the word. That's when you get that, that conviction. Mm -hmm. But throughout life, Paul talked about it in Ephesians and in Colossians about put off the old man, right? You have to put it off. So that means you're actually putting on these other things. So put off mm -hmm. anger, put off wrath, put off you know mm -hmm. malice, whatever those things he lists, he lists in the sinful ways. And so we're saying that you literally need to put those things off. Don't pick them up, but put on these. So right. it is. A, so it is a um, each and every day. Like it's saying that you know you you. And to me, at the end of the day, I'm saying it's a choice of sin. Sin, right. death, no longer. Sin, the Satan no longer has the power. He can influence you by the things you see, the things you hear, and the things you do. So, um, so yeah, you definitely have to. Um, when the Holy Spirit convict you. Ask God for forgiveness, repent, ask God for forgiveness and the strength and whatever you made a mistake on, you know, have God to show you the scripture, you know what I'm saying, to be done. But that one I just showed you, 2 Corinthians 6, 17, it says, don't touch unclean, no unclean thing and I'll receive you. So repent for what you touch. Just like you get your hands dirty, you go wash them, <laughs> wash them and then don't touch that anymore. One, uh, one thing I was just thinking about as you guys are talking, um, when you say put, when you say put off and then put on, right? So you're putting off um, all unclean things, anything that may be uh, all things that are sinful, that may be even even a stumbling block for you. Um, but put on, and first thing that I went to was the armor of God, putting on the armor of God, right? And but it was just it was just broken down to me in a way that is very uh, understandable. You can get halfway dressed. <laughs> it's not recommended, but you can wake up and walk out the house with your drawers on. <laughs> it's not recommended, but you can. <laughs> so I know for myself, I've 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 been I've been tightening up the helmet helmet of uh Salvation. salvation right so i've been working on what comes in and out of my mind what i allow the images to see what i you know what goes through here but i haven't been exercising the sword right i haven't tightened up the buckle right there's still the righteousness is not all the way tightened up or fastened up or it might be on it might be on the shelf <laughs> you know what I mean? It, 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 there's certain things that are not on on a daily basis. So while I've been focusing so much on my my mind, like Brother Fred said, I'm I'm the same way. I've been falling in my word, and that's what that's how we fight. We fight with the word. So as for putting off and cleansing yourself, which is step two to cleanse yourself and put off, just remind yourself to put on and put it all on, put the whole armor on so that when you go out, 
you know, you can be fully equipped. I just thought I, I thought I'd add that in there. Um, yeah, so let me add something on that, there, there, brother Phil. You know, uh, you know, just talk with everybody, and you can kind of see exactly what it is that you know. There's scriptures throughout the Bible, and basically, like going from a child, and we're talking about manhood. You know, it's maturity. You know, we got you know, like they say, when we first come in, we like children. You know, we feed on the milk, but as we grow, as we read our word, as God begin to, you know, work with us and mentor us, you know, to, to grow us up. You know, the scripture says that when I was a child, I thought as a child, but when I came a man, I put away childish things. So as you grow, the things that you got to deal with as a younger man, you know, you're going to grow. You're going to hold on to that word. And as God begins to talk to you and lead you and guide you and minister to you. Then you're gonna get that thing called discernment. So when you're around people, it's gonna shut off. You're gonna be like, look, man, I can't go there. I'm not gonna visit that place. I'm not gonna argue with my girl. I'm not going out having that cold one with you because that environment is gonna get me in trouble. You begin to know some things. So that's where your growth is going. You're gonna start maturing. The things that you used to do, you no longer do. So as you keep growing, it'll work itself out because God's gonna keep talking to you. He's gonna right. grow you up. Right, right, and and it, and it 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 takes time. It takes time, definitely. Um, it's a process. So step three to that. So after we we've we've acknowledged God, we've came into knowledge of Christ. We've uh, we're we're cleansing ourselves. Um, and mind you, all of these steps. That's why it's. it's I do it no justice by calling it four steps to biblical manhood because this is a life this mm-hmm. till you die. So the knowledge of Christ is ever growing. You won't ever come to completion of the knowledge of God. I believe so. Based upon the word of God, I don't believe that you will ever come into the completion of the knowledge of God. Yeah. There's some few areas of completion you will come into, like maybe your faith maturing more. Um, but to know fully who he is, you can forget about it. Um, so step one is knowledge of Christ, which is ever growing. Step two is cleansing yourself, which is ever growing because we live in a sinful world. Step three is submission to Christ. Um, the famous scripture is James 4, 7, and I'll, I'll read it for time. Uh, James 4, 7 is submit yourselves, therefore, to God. Resist the devil and he will flee from you. Draw near to God and he will draw near to you. Cleanse your hands, you sinners, and purify your hearts, you double-minded. All right, so submitting yourself to God. That This is really giving us steps. Submit yourselves, therefore, to God. One, resist the devil and he will flee from you. Two, draw near to God and he will draw near to you. Three, This is literally a three-step process. Submit, resist, and draw near. Um, That's how submission works. But the scripture that I I really helped me out the most when it it came to submitting to God was uh, 1 Peter 5 and 6. And the reason why is, I'll read it for you, 1 Peter five and six it reads humble yourselves therefore under the mighty hand of god so that at the proper time he may exalt you right so it helped me because to humble yourself is to put yourself lower there was a point in time where i thought i knew everything i needed to know for my life and i i thought i could figure it all out myself i thought i you know i knew exactly where i was going I had a a bulletproof plan to how everything was going to go down. And when I began to come in encounter with God and learn more about him, it was a lot of him pushing me down, but at the same time, me allowing it because I started to understand that I'm not greater than he is. So when you humble yourselves, it's literally you're coming to a fallen position. Um, One good example to think of, a physical example to think of when you humble yourself is how um, Jesus, when he as on his way to the cross, 
Um, when we talk about humbling yourselves or even humility, when Jesus was on his way to the cross and being sped on, being kicked, being murdered, right? The, the, the process of him getting to the cross, you know, um, having to carry his own cross, right? So that is a physical imagery of what humbling yourself looks like because something that I just got the, the other day was that God had all the power to end everything that was happening in that moment. But for a plan and for a purpose, he humbled himself. He lowered himself to endure what he had to endure for the sake of his creation. So if Jesus, who is God, can humble himself on the way to the cross, what do you expect you are going to be doing? Because if you don't choose to humble yourself, I know somebody that will humble you. So when it comes to submitting to God, I think for myself, it took me to have a clear look that I'm not bigger than he is. Once I've seen that I'm not bigger than he is and that I really am just a tiny piece to everything that is going on in the world, the universe, the, the heavenly realms, when you, you are this small when it comes to God. So that for me, was an eye opener. I was like, man, I really came. And there's a part we gonna we we gonna go over on time. It's all right. Y'all be fine. It's a part in Job. It's a part in Job um, where God is speaking. Right. Um, I got. I, I have to find. I'm not gonna misquote it. All right, Job, Job 38. All right, right here. So this, this particular passage, and if you guys get time, read it um, for yourself, because it's actually, um, when we talk about submitting, and, and not just submitting, but understanding your position when it comes to God and how big you are and how big he is. You know, Job 38 says, then the Lord spoke to Job out of the storm. He said, who is this that obscures my plans with words without knowledge? Brace yourself like a man. I will question you and you shall answer me. Where were you when I laid the earth's foundation? Tell mm. me if you understand. Who marked off its dimensions? Surely I know. Who stretched its measuring line across it? On what were its footings set? Or who laid its cornerstone? While the morning stars sang together and all the angels shouted for joy, who shut up the sea behind doors when it burst forth from the room? When I made the clouds its garment and wrapped it in thick darkness, when I fixed limits for it and set its doors and bars in place, when I said this far you may come and no farther, here is where you Here's where your proud waves halt. Talking about the ocean. This is how, this far you may come and no farther. Here's where your proud waves halt. Have you ever given orders to the morning or shown the dawn its place that it might take the earth by the edges mm. and shake the wicked out of it? The earth takes shape like clay under a seal its features stand out like those of a garment. The wicked are denied their light and their upraised arms is broken. Have you journeyed to the springs of the sea or walked in the recess of the deep? Have the gates of death been shown to you? Have you seen the gates of the deepest darkness? Have you comprehended the vast expansions of the earth? Tell me if you know all this. That's just, he goes, he, 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 it goes deeper than that, but that's just a level of just how great God is. He's questioning, he said, brace yourself like a man. I'm, I got some questions for you. Since you think you know everything, you think you know how life is supposed to go, tell me how this happened then. So when I read that, it really, 
it was like God really was speaking to me because I had a lot of questions that really I didn't have the authority to ask. But because we are made in such a creative way and because we have all of these things around us that influence us, we have the ability to think of these questions or we have the ability to allow the enemy to plant these questions. However it may be, they're there. So I think it's best to continuously walk with a, a level of humbleness, a level of submission when you're looking at God, right? So that's step, that's step three is submission to Christ, right? Humbling yourself before him. Step four is to develop a routine of seeking God which we've all talked about uh, multiple times tonight, um, just developing a routine. And a good routine takes time. If you don't get it right the first time, keep going. I struggle. I, I, I worked so hard these past couple of years to consistently get in the gym and stay in the gym, right? There was days where if, if I just walked in the gym and walked out, I was good because the hardest thing for me was to get up and get to the gym. So, of course, I'm, I'm my dad's son. I'm not going to waste no gas. <laughs> I'm going to go in here and work out and make use of my time. Mm -hmm. So, but there would be days where I would go in there and, and, and just me getting there was, was okay. Um, I didn't even have to work out. I just, I know I made that effort to go. Um, but I had been struggling to do the same when it comes to my routine with God, right? I have not um, put forth the same energy and eagerness that I have with staying in the gym or even learning my craft of, of uh, cutting hair. I have not put that same amount of time or, or effort into uh, the word. And that's something that I'm constantly, you know, working on, but I'm, I, I've been reminded, I was reminded last week when um, that brother came into the shop and we talked and I'm reminded with you guys tonight that um, it takes time. And I know I've spoke to pastor about it before and even pastor is continually growing. And we think that one person has it figured out than the other and it's not, that's not the case. You know, we are all still growing on a consistent level but the thing is, is that that separates uh, one person from the other is the fact that they, they keep getting up and getting back to it, right? You might fall off here and there, but you keep, keep going. Don't stop. The moment you stop is the moment you fail. Um, and I do have some, uh, some scriptures for that. Uh, First Chronicles 16 and 11. First Chronicles 16 and 11 reads, seek the Lord and his strength, seek his presence continually, right? A continual seeking of the Lord. And that, that seeking is, is not just um, in the morning or at night or during Bible study. It's a daily, um, a hourly thing. Uh, one one pastor that I listen to, he says, uh, um, he doesn't pray like the Muslims pray. The Muslims pray pray three times a day, on on the dot, right? It was like, but I don't remember an hour that I went without praying. Like, I might not go grab my rug and meet with him three times a day, but there's not an hour I did not speak to him, and that's a continual seeking. That's that continual seeking his presence because he's always with you he's always there it's just a matter of you being aware of him and being aware that he is present and that's where this would be another conversation for us one day but when it speaks about um being filled with the holy spirit um and I'm not sure if it's Ephesians or Corinthians. I'm not going to quote it, but it speaks. It says, uh, we have been bought with a high price. Um, 
He said, don't you know that your body is no longer yours, but a temple of the Holy Spirit, right? So if we are a temple of the Holy Spirit, Jesus left the Holy Spirit for us when he ascended. And the Holy Spirit is continu continually dwelling in us. That means that the Holy Spirit is present. We're just not aware of it. So it might not be that you need to be any more filled. It might be you just need to now acknowledge him, that he's there. Um, and the, the, I, the analogy hit me the other day that when you get into, you know, when we get into our cars and drive to work, we get in the car. Because the that night before our mirrors are already set, we're not checking our mirrors. We throw the key in. Some of us, we may or may not check the gas, start the car, put it in reverse, put it in drive, press the gas, and we go. There are over 150 different compartments in your car right now that you do not access on a daily basis. But they're there. And it's the same with the Holy Spirit. He's present. But because we're so busy, because we're doing X, Y, and Z, we're not operating our, our, our moving in the full capacity with the Holy Spirit present in us. Does that make sense? Oh, yeah. That's there's, right. there's, a, there's a level of acknowledgement that we need um, on a daily basis. And I believe that that is a big part of us seeking him because we're looking for it at this point. You know, when we get in the car, we don't look for our parking brake. You know what I mean? There's a lot of compartments in the car we do not look for. We need to continually look for the, are you here now? What are you saying? What are you doing? What am I doing? So I just, I thought I'd add that in there. So step one. But, but just a second, Brother Philip. Go ahead. Let's the Holy Spirit piece. So the, the thing is, it, it, it's part of what we do at, at First Baptist as well. When you go to John 15, like saying uh, one through through eight, it shows you, but you just go to John 15 and five, the Holy Spirit is not always in you. When you sin, the Holy Spirit is not directing you or guiding you because you're in the flesh. If we walk out the spirit, we're not fulfilling the lust of the flesh. To get in the spirit, we can't be sinning. So once we repent, we can ask for the Holy Spirit, you know, to, um, to indwell in us. And that's where 1 Corinthians 3 and 16, know you not that you're the temple of God, I think the one you're thinking about, our temple of God, and that the spirit of God dwelleth in you. If any man defileth the temple, which is you, of God, he shall God destroy. For the temple of God is holy, which temple ye are. So when you're in the flesh, you just, I mean, the Holy Spirit's not there. But the John 15 and 5, I am the vine, ye are the branch. You're connected to the vine, which is Jesus Christ. I'm the vine, ye are the branch. Ye abide in me, I abide in you. That abide means to remain. You have to remain in his word. He remains in you. How does he remain in you? the holy spirit but apart from me you can do nothing so you don't have the um and this is different you know sometimes people debate on this whatever else but again the righteous state the holiness that we actually are the conduct that's what god said um sanctification we need to continue to practice holiness you know what i'm saying so the holy spirit can dwell in our temple in our body if we're, if we're unclean we're saying that we're, we're, we're more satisfied with the world than with the word. And so that's the part where I get out of that, um, that bad behavior, you know what I'm saying, whatever else. But um, otherwise, you'd be walking around holy all day. Because think about where the Holy Spirit is, there is the fruit of the Spirit. That's the love, the joy, the goodness, the gentleness, the meekness. Everybody's not um, level every time. Some people have anger. Some people war, right? That's not the Holy Spirit. If the Holy Spirit's in them, how can the Holy Spirit allow that? If I'm walking after the spirit, I won't feel the lust of the flesh. So if I'm after mm -hmm. the spirit, you're going to see love. You're going to see peace. You're going to see all of that. When I'm in my flesh, you're going to see the anger, the malice, the hate. Would you say that even walking not in the flesh, having the spirit, still not being fully aware or acknowledging the spirit? Because... It's one thing to purposely stand and walk after the flesh. It's another thing to try to live upright. And then there's another thing where you're fully engaged with what the Holy Spirit has to do 
what he has to say and what he thinks. All right. But which really go back to what you said. You have to start off the day with God. You get your marching orders with God. Now, the right. enemy is going to do what? Set up traps during your day that's going to try to get you in the flesh. The thing is, am I going to take a situation that happened in the world, look at the word, search the scriptures in the word, pray through the prayer through the Holy Spirit to give me guidance how to react. So when I start my day out right, the enemy is going to attack. God might put a test to show you how strong you are and you might fail. So you have the Holy Spirit. You have enough Holy Spirit in you. You have enough faith, but you get discouraged by the problem. And now you go into the flesh. And so mm -hmm. when, but if I'm, but when God puts something ahead of you, then you have the strength to overcome it. You just fail in your faith and your flesh. So yeah, you walk out, you fool up, you're full. It's like, if I have this right now, this cup is empty. If it was full, I can't put nothing else in it. But when mm -hmm. life comes and somebody cuts me off, um, um, you know, I didn't read my word this morning. You know what I'm saying? Like you said, I'm empty or I'm like half dressed. I'm not, I'm not full. That means other things can fill in, in its mm -hmm. place. I'm either filled with the Holy Spirit, right? Or I'm allowing other things to capture that space. So if I start my day off, like you said, you start off right, like saying with God in prayer and your word, then you at least should be filled to head out for the day. Things going to try to drain you throughout, throughout that the day. day. Right. And the way right, you right, do right, it right. in a spiritual maturity way is attacking it scripturally and by faith. Right. But when you mess no, up, good. easy, just repent. Right. No, that's good. That's good. Um. All right, so let's go ahead and, and wrap it up. So just to go back over step one, knowledge of Christ, um, acknowledging him, acknowledging that uh, he is Lord. Step two, cleansing yourself, separating yourself uh, on a daily basis. Step three, submitting yourself to Christ. Uh, humbling yourself before him and step four developing a routine of seeking God um, daily hourly seeking God um, and that is what the last the last uh, the last scripture I'm gonna go through tonight is um, Ephesians 5. Uh, 15 through 20 and I'm going to read that Ephesians Ephesians 5 15 to 20 okay so Ephesians 5 15 20 is living by the spirit's power so be careful how you live. Don't live like fools, but like those who are wise. Make the most of every opportunity in these evil days. Don't act thoughtlessly, but understand what the Lord wants you to do. This is, is engaging us to live a more mindful life thinking about the daily things that we do um telling us to be careful how we live don't live like fools but those who are wise and making a, the most of every opportunity in these evil days don't act thoughtlessly without thinking but understand what the lord wants you to do um, in certain translations, it says understanding um, what the Lord wills, understanding his will. Um, but in order to live by the spirit, there's steps that need to be taken. And those steps are the steps that we went over tonight. And I believe that with those steps, now we can continue to keep living uh, carefully and in that, being able to understand what the Lord wills. So when we talk about biblical manhood and being a man, start with God. 
from there, he'll teach us how to consistently live and accept rebuke and be able to, to uh, live peacefully among one another and exchange and, and, and you know, exist with one another in a godly manner. So biblical manhood, start with God. And that's all I got for tonight. Hey, that 18, and I shut up before I forgot to think. <laughs> but I just said 18 actually talks about your part of filling the Holy Spirit. It says um, mm-hmm. in verse 18, and be ye not drunk with wine wherein access, but be filled with the Holy Spirit. So again, when you kind of the question, is it a constant refilling? Yeah, it's a constant, you know what I'm saying, needing to be to be restored. Um, because when you're in that flesh with the alcohol, you got those spirits that's leading you influence you. <laughs> right. <laughs> right. Some some alcohol places still say spirits. Pre refills. <laughs> <laughs> Right. Well, thank you, Philip. We appreciate oh, no that. problem. Excellent uh, presentation. Knowledge okay. of Christ. Cleanse yourself. Separate from people, places, and things. Submit to Christ and develop in a routine of seeking God. So you've given us a lot to work with. Thank you for your time and effort. Um, I mean, thank everyone here. I think um, I got a lot out of this. This is, um, I think the biggest thing for me is um, it's a life work. And um, I think as you were talking to one of the brothers here, I thought about Deacon Moore. It might have been uh, something Pastor was saying. I was thinking about Deacon. Is it Deacon Moore? A Deacon that's 97 years old? Yes. Yeah. yeah. So I thought about that. I was like, well, just watching and learning from him and, you know, even just some of him pulling aside and some, some of the mentorship is just like, you know, um, that's a reminder that this is a life's journey. Um, so, you know, what, what we're talking about here, us meeting with boys to men, a fellowship in church and, and everything else, I think it's, uh, it's all important to kind of keep us on, on the journey that God wants us to be. So, so thank you, gentlemen. Uh, see Deacon Mike. How you doing, Mike? Hey, God bless you. It was a re- exciting lesson. Enjoyed it. Philip, I think you did an outstanding job. I, I, I really enjoyed it, and I, and I learned a lot, too. Thank you. Anybody else have anything? Yeah, Brother Philip, you you did an awesome job on this lesson, and I learned a lot. And uh, the scriptures were on point and on time, and you you thought it out well, and and uh, you left no stone don't turn, and uh, uh, you put a lot on our minds to think about. And and God bless you, and keep on seeking God, and keep on trusting God in everyday life, and and uh, and. Um, God bless you for your your faithfulness towards him. Thank you. Well, you know, as usual, Philip, man, you know, I, you know, I've watched you, brother, man, your maturity, man, and from where you were before, not that you was bad back then, because I never saw it really, but, you know, uh, man, God is using you, man, and you just continue to do what you're doing, man. I enjoyed the message, man, and like I say, that saying is a perfect saying from and I love that, man. So that's something I'm going to write down and implement, man, on a day-to-day basis, man, because I don't want nobody to ever fall because of me. And I don't want them to blame Jesus for that. <laughs> so, you know, so right. thank you, man. That was a great example, man. And I enjoyed the, the whole um, lesson. Yeah, like saying, um, great personalization, you know what I'm saying, I actually of it. Um, like saying it's something that you didn't just study to present is something that to me is a principle th- through the, your process, you know what I'm saying, of growth. So um, like I said, and just um, just overall process of like you're saying, as you know, that you're still maturing. Um, just like I said, I, I, you always hear me say once, I'm, I'm not perfect, but I'm being perfected by perfection. 
We know we got different stages, different valleys, but I'm telling you, you way ahead, like I believe of me, <laughs> and, and a lot <laughs> at that age, um, at, at your age. Um, well, about where you are now, but I know you before. But like, um, <laughs> what I mean by that is younger. <laughs> like I got, I saw it kind of getting serious a little bit at 25, 26, but you was already there before that age. I mean, understanding, like saying your purpose, it, you know, purpose and the task, um, a lot of people don't try to answer that question. You know, why am I here? And, you know, so, so I applaud you, you know what I'm saying, for doing that. And, and, and you see it, be able to help others um, as they listen to this. Thank you. Thank you. Philip, I'd just like to share one other thing with you before we go. Barbershop is a very tough environment to work in being a Christian. But you have one advantage over them. Don't be deterred. Use that barber chair as your pulpit. Because when you got one person sitting in your chair, that's where you can devote your attention to that one person. Mm -hmm. You don't have to be shouting down two or three chairs down. Use that chair as your pulpit. Okay? Yes, sir. All right. Yes, sir. Damari, you have anything? No, I don't. <laughs> yeah. I I I I want to add that um, I'm glad you mentioned that doc because Jamar here this is my son. He's a, he's on the on the uh, we well, don't see his face, but I, I can say Philip, I appreciate you because Jamar comes to Philip to get his hair cut. Jamar is kind of, he's an introvert. He's kind of and um, I tell you. Um, Pastor's right. You know, if you, you far more advanced than where I was when I was your age, as far as self awareness. And, um, so, you know, I do appreciate you not only the work that you're doing here, being a family man, and and and, and setting an example. But um, right now, during these days and times, it it is it's really you guys are our future, and I think he can relate to you a lot, and you know you. You hear it from me, but I don't know how much he actually hears. You know, he'll come to church and talk to the brothers here. But I do appreciate you, and, and you, you know, you, you know, you're not, like you said, you're not perfect, but you are a Christian, and you live in by a set of standards, which really makes a it, it makes a big difference. Yeah, so appreciate yeah. it. Yeah, Rev Wolf. You know, I'll just say that, hey, hey, Brother Philip, you know, hey, always, man, since day one, man, you always talking about the Lord, man. I know that God is using you. And so just continue to work, man. Just just let him use you. It ain't always going to be easy, man. This 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 journey, man, this is a it's a hard struggle, man. So uh, but I know you're a young guy, man. And, you know, you, you, you your wife, your family, man, just keep grinding, man. You know what I'm saying? And just let the Lord just continuously just listen to him. You know what I mean? A lot of times we get caught up in the world, man. And I'm talking about, I'm just talking real talk, man. You know what I'm saying? That's just the way it is. I mean, in this life, man, they say in this, in this life, there's going to be struggles. You know what I'm saying? There's going to be tribulation. You know what I'm saying? But I just say, man, just, hey, continue to keep reading, keep studying. You know, we know just by the way you talk, man. You know, you, you know, God is speaking to you, man. So, you know, there's no need. To, I don't have to tell you nothing, man, because God going to continuously work on your heart, man. You know what I mean? And that's all you just got to do, man. Just let them use you. Keep listening. Keep reading. Take some quiet time to meditate on your word and get away in your alone space, man. And uh, just keep doing it, man. You're going to be all right, man. Yeah, God bless you. Man. Okay. Hey, good lesson, man. You know, you're on the scriptures. You're on the word. What can I say, man? You, uh, you're going to influence some people, man. Just keep doing it. Keep growing. Yes, sir. Thank you. All right, Phil, you, you want to take us out in prayer or you want to you want to choose somebody to take us out in prayer here? No, no, I got it. I got it. <laughs> All right. All right. Heavenly Father, Lord God, we come to you right now in the name of Jesus, Father God, just thanking you, Heavenly Father, um, for this moment, Father God, for this time of fellowship, Lord, and to go through your word, Father God. Uh, your word says that it is alive, Heavenly Father. And, and we just thank you for being present in the midst of it, Lord God. Right now, I ask Heavenly Father that 
uh, from this day moving forward that each one of us, Heavenly Father, at the sound of my voice will uh, create that time for you, even myself, God, to create a space, Father God, where we can seek you um, on a continual basis, Father God. Not perfectly, Lord God, but intentional. Lord, we thank you, Jesus. We praise your name. Um, I pray that everyone have a blessed night, Heavenly Father. Uh, in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 All right. Hey, right now we got a um a project that's been done at the church tomorrow.